Hi everyone, good afternoon. Hello. Welcome back to the State Department. Nice to see you all. Hi, Andrea. Well, by now you have heard the news that uh, Russia has made the decision to expel 60 of our staff from that country and also close down our consulate in St. Petersburg. A short while ago, I spoke with our U.S. Ambassador to Russia, John Huntsman, who is serving over there. Uh, we spoke by phone and he shared with me a statement which I'd like to read with you. This evening, Ambassador John Huntsman was convoked to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Russian Federation. The Russian Federation dubbed 60 of our staff persona non grata and they now must depart within seven days. They also ordered the closure of our consulate in St. Petersburg within 48 hours. It's clear from the list provided to us that the Russian Federation is not interested in a dialogue on issues that matter to our two countries. I spoke with him a short while ago, have also spoken with some of his other colleagues who are serving in Moscow. I let Ambassador Huntsman know that the entire State Department and U.S. government stands with our people at Mission Russia. I want to remind you that there is no justification for the Russian response. Our actions were motivated purely by the attack on the United Kingdom, the attack on a British citizen and his daughter. Remember, this is the first time that a weapons grade nerve agent, Novichok, has been used outside of war on, on uh, allied soil. We have not taken these steps lightly. We've taken these steps in concert with our allies across the world. 28 countries now join the United States backing our allies in the decision to have kicked out 153 Russian spies from the various countries. Georgia is the latest country that has joined us in this effort. I believe they uh, announced today that they would kick out one spy, which is significant uh, given that Georgia is in the backyard of Russia. Our ambassador was called into the Russian Foreign Ministry this afternoon, uh, excuse me, this evening, Moscow time. We're now reviewing the Russian government's note informing us of their response. It appears that Russia has chosen to take the regrettable, unwarranted action to respond to our entirely justified action that I just covered. As I understand it, Russia plans to take the same unjustified actions against 28 other countries, countries that stood in solidarity with the UK. Russia is further isolating itself following the brazen chemical attack. We are still reviewing the details of the Russian action, but let me say again that we reserve the right further to any Russian retaliation against the United States. So we are reading this, we are reviewing it, and we'll respond accordingly. Uh, we typically go to Matt first. With Matt, uh, I'd be happy to start taking Sorry, what? Um what was that last bit? You reserved the right to do more, is what you said? Or we reserved, reserved the, the right, right to respond. To respond to their response? Correct. So in other words, this is not over. This could is not necessarily over. We could be es could see an escalation beyond this? I'm not going to predict anything that could happen, but we certainly have uh, the ability to do All right. so. Um, and when you say uh, there is no justification for the Russian response, yeah. um, I, I'm not sure I understand. You, you guys threw out 60 of their people. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, when they made you reduce your diplomatic presence last year, you made them let, reduce. Let me explain why I say there is no justification for that response. The United States, in concert with many other countries, made the decision to kick out Russian spies. We don't see this as a diplomatic tit for tat. Russia is responsible for that horrific ta attack on the British citizen and his daughter. Once again, they have broken the Chemical Weapons Convention. It was a banned substance that they have used, Novichok. We take this matter very seriously. Go ahead. I wanted to let you finish. Okay. I you were... <laughs> Thank you. I, that like normally you know. doesn't happen. <laughs> yeah, well, um, you know, there's a <laughs> you first caught, time for you everything. You caught me off guard. <laughs> um, they don't need to act like a victim. Russia should not be acting like a victim. The only victims in this situation are the two victims in the hospital in the UK right now. And the people who cannot go into the park, the medical workers, the first responders who are now having to be, um, you know, be treated and watched carefully because they may have come into contact, contact with that so substance. Are you, are you saying that, the, that the, the American diplomats who are being expelled are not spies under diplomatic cover? I'm saying that they work for the U.S. State Department. They are our colleagues who have served there with great distinction. Uh, I can tell you that Russia did provide us a list of 60 names. We are reviewing that list and we will respond accordingly. Right, but you're, but you're saying that, that these 
that your your action was justified, theirs wasn't because these people aren't the equivalent of who Let's, you... I, I think we're forgetting what got us to this place. Their attack. What? The United States and many other countries chose to respond by kicking out spies. I, this all begins with Russia's actions. They're it. irresponsible actions where they are showing that they're not serious about being I, a cooperative world I get player. It, but surely you expected them to respond. This is not Look, a surprise. It doesn't surprise us. Okay. It doesn't surprise right, us. The last but one, it is not justified. I want to be clear well, about la that. Hold on. Last one for me. Yeah. Do you think, in, it, 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 so you clearly don't think the number of people being thrown out are is reciprocal, is a, is a reciprocal move. What about the consulate in St. Petersburg? Do you think that the closure of that is the equivalent to your closure of their consulate in Seattle? Okay. I'm not going to equate one with the other. I can say that Russia is choosing through its actions to further diplomatically and also economically isolate itself, not just from the United States, from the world. Uh, they have indicated that they would kick out other um, countries' diplomats who are serving in Russia at this time. Russia clearly is not interested in having good relations with other countries, and that is evident by the actions that they have taken. Um, Andrew, go, uh, go ahead. Heather, why haven't we heard from the President of the United States? The last thing we know about his communications with Russia were his congratulatory call to Vladimir Putin when he did not mention this attack. With this being the largest expulsion that we let, ordered, let me, and now the retaliation I have an issue with the premise since of your the question. Cold War. Uh, you have only seen the readout, the formal readout that was provided mm -hmm. of the call. You do not know the entire content of the call that the president had with Vladimir Putin. So you cannot assume that none of this was in fact brought up. In terms of a so-called congratulatory call, that is something that we do. That is something that past presidents have done. Even you may not like a country, you may have difficulties with a country, but that doesn't mean yeah, that well. you don't pick up the phone and have a conversation. The reality is whether we like it or not, we have to have a relationship with a government as large and as significant as Russia. Well, all of the reporting and the readouts and the White House statements have not questioned the fact that he did not raise the subject of this and that call. Can, are you saying now that he did raise the subject? I'm not of this saying attack? that at all. What I am saying, Andrea, is that what you read in a readout does not always cover everything that was stated in a call. You were not on that call. I was not on the call. So I don't think that you can jump to those conclusions. Uh, do you think that? Isn't Russia and the rest of the world getting mixed messages about the difference between the president's stated uh, views of the Kremlin and what the administration has done? I'd say this is a tired storyline. This administration has taken very tough actions against Russia, not against the Russian people, but against the Russian government. And you have seen that through numerous rounds of sanctions. You've seen that through our actions that we took earlier this week. Uh, you've seen that through our actions that we've taken at the United Nations, standing together against Russia and its activities in which it still continues to kill and be responsible for killing tens of thousands of innocent civilians who are living in Syria. Our actions have been extremely tough, but the reality is that we still have to maintain some time, type of contact with these countries. Um, Hi. Uh, Hi, Lisa. Hi. Um, I want to go back to um, a little bit of the um, questioning of, of Matt. Like, when you talk about um, that this action was not justified because you took these actions because of um, the Russian, the nerve agent that you said Russia mm -hmm. used. I mean, essentially, you're asking Russia to just admit that they did it and, and take their punishment, Wouldn't right? that be the adult thing to do? Wouldn't well, that be the right thing to do by I, the world? I, I, you break the Chemical Weapons Convention. You br and that is in place for a reason. That is in place so that countries can be responsible parties and so that they can work together and we can all work together in some sort of peaceful understanding of the kinds of weapons that won't be used against civilians. I'm not saying Russia broke with that. I'm not Russia broke with that and so a lot of countries made the decision that they needed to be held responsible and mm -hmm. that their spies needed to be held responsible and kicked out. I'm not saying whether they did or they didn't. I know that there's evidence suggesting that they did, but they're saying that they didn't. Right. So essentially you're at, again okay. You're just asking for that. I mean, by saying that, like, this is your punishment and you should take it and not retaliate, you are, in fact, asking them to, you know, admit to something that they say that they did. And you know do. what? There's nothing wrong with admit it, admitting wrongdoing. 
And we've seen Russia again and again misinform, use disinformation, uh, claiming that little green men went into Ukraine, uh, denying responsibility for the downing of MH17. We don't talk about that much anymore. Uh, and I'm referring to the plane that was shot down, killing many innocent civilians over Ukraine. Uh, Russia is known for its disinformation campaigns, and I think this is just another um, one. I just like one more on the um, further measures. Um, do you anticipate when you say you're not going to rule out, you know, anything, um, are you talking about, you know, seizing Russian assets or are you talking about specifically on the expulsions? Because if past practice is that in terms of expulsions, you know, you expel a certain amount, you expect them to expel, uh, you know, with reciprocity and then other measures or something. I can just tell separate. you that we reserve the right to respond further. We're reviewing our options. Including, including more I'm not, I'm not going to get into specifics about that. Uh, this is something uh, that the president, uh, our deputy secretary, uh, General Mattis, others, the entire interagency process can have a conversation about what to do next. And I'm not going to get ahead of any of those conversations that might happen. Uh, hey, Rich. In the uh, uh, U.S. presence, the full U.S. presence in Russia, uh, at least for the next couple of days, how or where does St. Petersburg as a consulate fit in? Is it um, the, as far as the passport volume it controls, the staffing it has there, um, and how much will its removal from the constellation of the U.S. presence there affect U.S. Well, operations? It, it's significant. It's significant. Um, our people don't like to see something like this happen. Uh, it is certainly not a good day for our colleagues who are serving at Embassy Moscow and elsewhere uh, in that country. It's frankly not a good day for the locally employed staff. And when I say that Russia has decided to further isolate itself diplomatically and also econ economically, that's what I mean. There will be locally employed staff who very likely will need to be laid off as a result. Those are people who are Russian citizens, who work uh, at our complexes and our compounds and who do all kinds of work. Our work at our embassies and our consulates is not possible without the help of those locally employed staff. If Russia is concerned about its economy, it wouldn't be taking these actions because those people will be hurt. We saw that happen last year uh, when we had were forced to draw down uh, some of our colleagues um, in, in Russia earlier, and we saw many locally employed staff uh, go. Many people who have frankly worked for us for sometimes 10, 20, 30 years even. And as it, the Russians wanted to close down a consulate, and they had several to choose from, um, the fact that they did choose St. Petersburg, does that uh, or does the U.S. view that as, a, as, as trying to maximize the effect on the U.S. I, I can't answer that question. You'd have to ask Russia why they chose to, uh, to select St. Petersburg. Okay. Okay. Did, did Deputy Secretary uh, Sullivan speak to someone in Russia, his counterpart? Well, Ambassador Lavrov, Huntsman or? did. That's, no, that's typically the, the... Nobody in the building speak to or Hold plan on. to speak? Typically, what will happen is that a diplomatic note will be given to one of our colleagues. That was provided to Ambassador Huntsman. We are at the point where we are still trying to translate that diplomatic note. That The contents of that will make its way back to Washington. We will take a look at it. We will review it. This happened not so long ago, so we're still in the process of gathering the information. And uh, President Trump last week said he was planning or intended to speak with, to meet with uh, President Putin. It is something still in the I don't have any meetings to announce. After. We would certainly like to have a, uh, a better relationship with Russia, but their actions today uh, don't indicate that they are uh, very serious about having a better relationship with the United States at this time. Hi, Carol. No. Uh, Heather, how do, you, how do you expect this to impact other issues, such as the efforts to get Russia to exert pressure on the Assad government in, uh, in Syria? Well, efforts for Russia to exert pressure on the Assad government, they're not doing anything to help in Syria. Russia is the huge part of the problem uh, for the tens of thousands of innocent civilians who've been killed and are still being killed each and every day as we look at the video that's coming out of eastern Ghouta. Russia is responsible for that. Russia not only sends its people, its military, its weapons down there. Uh, you see video, people on the ground point up to the planes and they say there's another Russian bombardment. We see the barrel bombs coming down. Russia is directly responsible for propping up Bashar al-Assad, who's been killing his own people for far, far too long. Iran, also responsible. We don't anticipate that Russia is going to, based on their actions, 
is going to help right now. We've seen that they have uh, supported UN Security Council resolutions, and they failed to, even though they supported it at the United Nations, they failed to follow through. And I think you could see that in the, in the ceasefire resolution that was passed unanimously, oh, about a month or so ago. They have never adhered to that ceasefire resolution. We'd like them to stick to the bargain and be an honest broker and be a responsible party to the world. So are you going to take this up at the United Nations? Uh, I have not spoken with Ambassador Haley about that, but if I get any information for you, I certainly will bring it to you. Um, hi. Laura, I wonder if this discussion would be a little less abstract if you could tell us something about the dangers that Novichok, Novichok poses. Like, how much is a lethal dose of Novichok, and is it more dangerous than an older generation of chemical weapons? Uh, that, that is a very interesting question. I'm not an expert on how much of a chemical weapon one uh, is needed to become deadly. I'm not an expert on that. That would probably be an intelligence matter, but Novichok is contained in the Chemical Weapons Convention. That is one of the banned substances. But the point is that a very small amount can kill you, and if it were used for terrorism? Look, I'm not an expert at that, but we can certainly see the condition uh, that the British citizen and his daughter ended up in, in serious condition in the hospital. And I think since countries have decided to ban that substance, um, I, I think that speaks for itself. Okay, if I could ask you about Turkey. No, hold on. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Okay. Hey, I just wanted to kind of follow up on Rich's question on the impact of shuttering the mm -hmm. St. Pete consulate. Yeah. What, if any, unique services does that consulate provide to Americans? Well, some of the things that our, our consular, serve, uh, consular uh, facilities provide are, are visas. So if someone wants to come to the United States, such as a Russian citizen wants to visit a family member in the United States, and they would need to apply for a visa there. They would need to set up an appointment, come in, into our embassy. When we are forced to close down our facilities, when we are forced to uh, draw down our staff, we have fewer people who can respond to those queries. Our priority has to be uh, whether it's there or any other country, dealing with American citizens first. So we will be able to uh, work to assist American citizens. It certainly hampers our ability to do so, but that is always our priority. But certainly uh, visa and consular operations uh, will be affected by this. Can yeah. go back to Syria, uh, Russia in terms of, you know, you were speaking um, about Syria and mm -hmm. what they're doing in Syria. The president just said um, a few minutes ago that the U.S. is coming out of Syria very soon. Um, and let other people take care of it. We're coming out. Hmm. So, I mean, when he says let other people take care of it, you know, specifically, he means the Russians because they're really the ones um, on the ground. And I'm wondering, um, will this, you know, back to Carol's question, if this will, you know, affect your efforts to come out of Syria, um, if you're going to leave it to the Russians and you have no relationship with I the can Russians. only say that as a general matter, and I, I have not seen the President's comments myself, I don't, under, I don't know the context in which his comments were said, um, but I, I can say that as a general matter, this administration looks to other countries to help out. Far too often the United States has been the leading country in efforts, whether they be humanitarian efforts or leading fighting efforts to try to help out a country, save a country, or fight a war. Um, so the United States, under this administration, looks for other parties to do more, but that's just as a general matter, and I can't comment beyond but that. Like Russia is, the, as you know, the main party on the ground there, mm -hmm. and when you say leave it to other people, that's specifically... At least I can't comment on what the president uh, supposedly said. I haven't seen it. I'd have to refer you back well, to the White he House. Didn't, he didn't supposedly say it. Well, I have not he, seen it myself. He, he, he okay? said it. But... I, I have not seen that myself. Okay. And, uh, you, so don't, you, don't... you don't necessarily comment or report on things that have been heard secondhand, and I'm not going to do that either. That's okay. That's fine. So you're not aware of any policy de determination to pull all, to pull the U.S. out of. Syria. I am not. No. Okay. No. So the, the so the president is just speaking off the cuff and I, making. I don't a know. I don't know. I'd have to refer you back to the White House. I'm not. A, I'm not aware it's of those not comments. It's not just the Russians who are big in Syria. It's also the Iranians. That's, and if you guys are going to pull out, and just leave it to other people, Russia and Iran are going to go in there. I'm just wondering, have you spoken to the Israelis about this? Um, because I don't think they'd Matt, like it. Matt, the I'm Iranian not prepared to comment on uh, what was supposedly said right. because I've not heard it myself. I would refer you back to the White House Can for I more information. Can I go back to just the embassy, uh, the diplomats issue okay. for a second? Um, I'm still a little bit mystified as to how you can, how you said, why you were able to say yesterday and maintain yesterday that the United States is safer because these 60 Russians are now out. Am I correct in presuming that because you're saying that these American diplomats who are being expelled from Russia uh, are not the same, don't fall into the same category 
as the 60 Russians that it would be inaccurate, uh, wrong for the Russians to claim that Russians are safer. Or you know, be they, they claim without. all kinds of unusual things that we don't agree with. Uh, they are the masters of propaganda. I think you very well know that. Uh, the, to the question of you kicking out, kicking so out, much. kicking out, well, there too. Um, kicking out spies, I would argue that our country is safer, and I think many of you who cover uh, our elections process and many American and Western reporters would argue, too, <laughs> that the United States is better off with fewer Russian spies. Okay. And then last thing is the uh, – are you mentioned 28 countries have taken action. And, uh, That's right. Um, Plus the United States, so 29 in total. Are there countries that you asked or would have liked to have seen take action that didn't? That I, you're disappointed in? I would say this appears to be a rolling effort. Uh, Georgia is the latest country that I got on just today. Other countries may join uh, this effort in recognizing uh, the awful actions that Russia right. took against but these two individuals. this appears to go beyond NATO and the EU, the number of countries. Australia, to, right, also exactly. Canada. So have, so have you sought, like, the Japanese, the South Koreans, I'm, I'm not the aware. Israelis, I am not none aware. of them have done anything. I'm not aware of all the uh, the phone calls or the contacts that we have had uh, on this uh, campaign, if you will. I know the British government has been very engaged. They've been talking with people as well. This is a, a global effort. Other countries may be having conversations with countries that we're simply not aware of. Uh, 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 no, yeah, no, not yet. Uh, and, and then we'll, we'll take your question after that. Uh, we'll give Andrea one last one. Okay. Uh, you spoke about Syria. There are other, clearly other U.S.-Russian issues in play here, arms control, mm -hmm. as well as North Korea and our efforts there. Mm -hmm. um, how might this escalation affect our relationship, our ability to work with Russia on other key issues, bilateral issues? I, I would look at it from another point of view. Uh, Russia's decisions, Russia is making the very clear decision that it appears not to be interested in working with many countries around the world. I think we have to look at their actions and the actions that they are taking and pushing countries, uh, pushing countries aside. That is why I say that Russia has clearly making the, made the decision to diplomatically isolate itself. They've done that from the UK. They've done that from Germany. They've done that from France, Lithuania, Estonia. I can go on and on about the number of countries that it has chosen to distance itself from. And, and I'm going I'm to move on. I think we've covered enough on that. Uh, Said, go right ahead. Yeah, very quick question yeah. uh, on the Palestinian issue. Yesterday, Ambassador Friedman uh, told Channel 10, uh, the Israeli Channel 10, that if Abbas does not come to negotiate with us, someone else will, mm -hmm. his successor will. Mm -hmm. Is there, are there any plans to, let's say, have regime change in, in, in the Palestinian Absolutely authority? not. Absolutely not. And I think, I think the ambassador uh, was clear in his remarks. He put out the t a tweet this morning. Uh, if I could try to find it here, he says he was misquoted in various reports stemming from an interview that was published today. The United States is not seeking to replace Mahmoud Abbas. It is for the Palestinian people to choose his, its leadership. So I think he was clear in his response to that. But why not? I mean, you know, you guys aid the Palestinian Authority. It seems that the Palestinian leadership has not been able to, to, to sort of deliver. On that that, is, up for, that is up for the Palestinian people to decide. Right. And one, one uh, other yeah. question. Tomorrow there are going to be marches. They are called the return marches to celebrate okay. uh, land day. The Israelis have deployed something like 100 snipers uh, around Gaza. There's likely to be a bloodbath. Are you uh, calling on the Israelis to refrain from the use of excessive force? I, I, in the would, case I would call on you to not use that kind of language. <laughs> what you. language? A language. It sounds like you're you're calling for that yourself. Look, I'm not calling for that okay. myself. I'm saying that okay. people are maybe 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 marching in the tens of thousands. Mm -hmm. The Israelis are saying that they have deployed. I'm not saying that. They're saying mm -hmm. that they have deployed snipers and so on. This is likely to to result in bloodshed. Uh, do you call on them to refrain from using excessive force? I, I certainly There's hope you're wrong. Uh, I hope we don't I'm wrong. Like, we don't like we don't like to hear excessive language in right. conjunction with an area that is so sensitive. Right. Um, Israel, you know, has certainly put on uh, heightened security alerts. Right. As a result, you know, we hope the measures that they choose to take and to be implemented will minimize the impact on the ability of people. Uh, to cross in and out of Gaza, for example. Uh, overall, we believe that Israel has the right to defend itself, but we uh, recognize that people have a right to be out and uh, be out in the fashion that you had mentioned. Just but we, ho but we hope things remain calm. And, last, and lastly, please, and lastly, there are uh, about 
1,500 Christians in Gaza. Yeah. Some of them would like to go to the Church of Holy Sepulchre. The Israelis have denied them that. Would you call on Israel to allow Gaza Christians to go and, and celebrate the Easter? I, I would just say that we hope that they will do this and they will implement this in a way that will minimize impact and will allow people to go where they uh, need to go to to celebrate religious holidays. I have a question on yeah. this march. Um, do you see it as the Israelis do that this is a call by Hamas to incite to violence? I, because I, that's what the Israelis are, you know, the message that they're putting out is that they feel that Hamas is inciting to violence and spending a lot of money on this campaign. Yeah, I, I would just refer you back to the government of Israel. I don't have any information on well, that. Well, I mean, but how do you view this march? I don't have any additional information on that beyond I know, I'm aware that it's happening. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, go ahead. Hey, Alicia. Um, a date for the summit between North and South Korea has been announced for April 27th. Uh, what are your expectations? Are you hopeful that this can set the stage for a successful meeting between President Trump and Kim Jong-un? It seems like that was announced uh, weeks ago, doesn't it? And it was only this morning. Uh, how quickly uh, the news moves, certainly. Uh, I think that move, that meeting overall that was announced between, uh, the, between the Republic of Korea and North Korea just moves us closer uh, to the point where the United States can sit down with North Korea and have a meeting. Uh, we're realistic about that overall. The State Department is planning for that meeting. We're going ahead in full faith and good faith. Uh, we've had lots of conversations with the Republic of Korea about the contents of that meeting and the contents of their discussion. And uh, we believe overall that the pressure campaign is working. Um, it's one that I've talked about so many times up here, and we're proud of that pressure campaign and so many countries uh, joining the United States and recognizing uh, this destabilizing uh, elements within North Korea and the North Korean regime in terms of its uh, ballistic missile and uh, nuclear testing. And uh, okay. just sorry, Heather, yeah. one more follow up on mm -hmm. that. But uh, let me just move on to her and I'll come yeah, back to you if I can. No, uh, sir, sorry, sorry. Okay. Um, still on North Korea. Yeah. Um, the North Koreans have said that they're committed to denuclearizing the Korean Peninsula um, if South Korea and the United States respond to their efforts with goodwill and create an atmosphere of peace and stability. How do you assess that? statement um the japanese government has expressed skepticism about their true intentions there so what is the u.s perspective? and certainly i i understand uh the feeling on the part of the japanese government they were here about a week and a half two weeks ago and sat down with deputy secretary sullivan and shared their concerns i i can tell you we are strong allies uh we are on the same page working with japan just as we are with south korea on these issues of mutual concern, uh, chiefly uh, their country's security and the security of the region. Um, I understand uh, their skepticism. We are being realistic, too, about this meeting, but that doesn't mean that we won't go ahead and plan a meeting uh, to have these conversations about the denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. Okay, Related Jenny I Thank you very much, Heather. Uh, recently, uh, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un has mentioned that he wants a conditional denuclearization in Korean Peninsula. I think there is a difference between the CVID that U.S. wants. What is the U.S. prospect of the denuclearization talks? Because they liked the conditional denuclearization talks. North Korea has, has stated to, uh, to South Korea, certainly, and to China, that it is committed to denuclearization. Uh, we are going to, or we are planning, at least we are planning to go ahead with meetings to have conversations with, about, with them about that. At this point, we will go forward with those and hope that they are serious about that. Okay. And then we're going to have to wrap it up. Discussions ready to some concessions as any negotiation. I, I'm not going to get ahead of any meetings that take place. Uh, some of these would be uh, established. Some of those guidelines would be established at a much, much higher level. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Hi. President Trump just said in Ohio that he may hold up the Korea Free Trade Agreement until its deal is reached with North Korea. Mm. Uh, is that a possibility? Has the State Department been informed? Well, uh, the Chorus Agreement, the Korea Free Trade Agre Agreement, is something, you know, it's funny because there were a lot of countries that worried that we were pulling out of everything. I mean, this is an agreement that the President and others working for the administration have been working on. Uh, we believe that this will be a um, uh, better for American workers and for the U.S. economy. But this is not a done deal. Uh, there is still, it's not, it's not a final agreement. I have not heard what the president said about that. So I don't want to comment beyond the fact that we are renegotiating. Uh, we can renegotiate with other countries and end up uh, stronger 
as a result of the, those negotiations, but it's still not a done deal but just yet. Just okay. Okay. Point. Um, I know you don't want to speak to what the president might have just said, but do you see this agreement um, as conditional as to whether there's an agreement with North Korea? I. I'm, I would refer you to the White House. If there's something that the president just said about that, I'd have to refer you to the White House. No, I'm not talking about what yeah. the president said, but like, is it your understanding that this agreement is conditional upon whether there's My understanding is that this agreement has not been finalized just yet. Yeah, but okay. what he said was that he would hold it up, delay it, mm -hmm. use it as leverage um, with the North Korean agreement. This is the second thing that we've asked you about that the president spoke to today that you don't seem to know anything about, which suggests that the, the president is just, you know, kind of, I don't know. Do uh, I need to remind you again that I work at, the, uh, what is it, 2205 uh, C Street? Uh, I don't work at 2201. Oh, See, I'm still learning the address. Reason, but but this is a, like, these are policy yeah. questions. Either it's you're pulling policy. out of Syria or you're not. Either you're going to hold up the, the chorus agreement for a, a deal with North Korea or you're not. And chorus deal Department, has not been finalized just yet. We are I, I in the process that, but of it, renegotiating but that. I don't remember as anyone a whole, ever. Hold on. As a whole, this administration looks for more countries to join us in our efforts so the United States isn't consistently carrying the heavy load. We will always continue to be a leader on these matters. Matters, diplomatically, militarily, but we look for others to join I, I, I us. Okay? It, Beyond that, I'm not going to comment on anything it, that the president has There has been no discussion said. at yeah. all anywhere else that I'm aware of, maybe I'm wrong, but that I'm aware of, that the, the, the free trade agreement with South Korea is somehow linked to a denuclearization agreement with, with North Korea. Look, a part of that is being handled out of the U.S. Trade Representative's office. If you want any more details on the trade agreement, I can refer you to his office. Turkey, and we're going to, and I'm going to have to leave it at that. Turkey. Okay, La Turkey. Uh, go ahead, uh, Miss. Hi. What's, what's the status of the investigation into the alleged attacks on U.S. diplomats in Cuba? <clears throat> Uh, hi, welcome. This is your first time here, right? It is. Okay. Thank you, Heather. Uh, you're welcome back anytime you like. Uh, so, Cuba, um, last time that we had talked about it, and it's been a while since it's come up here in the briefing. Um, just for an update on the investigation, we uh, the investigation is still ongoing. The State Department is involved in that, as are other government agencies and, and departments as well. It is still an ongoing investigation. The United States government is still not sure who or what is responsible for those health attacks on 24 of our embassy personnel who were based down at our, our embassy in Cuba. Uh, the investigation continues. It's not something that we're giving up on. Uh, the decision was made late last year to bring home uh, some of our people. We are operating at a reduced staffing rate. We still are. It is considered an unaccompanied post. That means that we don't allow spouses down there, children down there. The reason being for these personnel changes, uh, which went into effect last year, is that we can't necessarily ensure people's safety when we don't know what is responsible for attacking our people. Yeah. Right. Uh -huh. There's evidence now that there is uh, there was brain damage. There's medical evidence of brain damage done on the U.S. Um, diplomats. Have any measures been taken? Uh, to protect U.S. embassy employees around the world, not only in Cuba, but around the world? I, I can tell you if anyone feels, and, we, and we've been very public about this, if any of our colleagues around the world feel that there has been something suspicious mm -hmm. that has taken place, if they're noticing some unusual symptoms, they have been encouraged, and we've made this clear, to contact the State Department and talk with our Med Department and talk with their supervisors and make us aware of this. Uh, we have provided medical services. Uh, through different medical facilities in the United States on the mainland for our people who felt like they were affected. Uh, they are receiving treatment. Uh, they're meeting with doctors, undergoing various levels of testing. And at any point, if someone feels like they are uh, experiencing some symptoms that are similar to the symptoms that others affected have uh, experienced, they can then go in for uh, for testing. But beyond that, I'm not going to discuss the specifics can, of what, I, our, what our people uh, went through. Just, can you just tell me okay. if that includes protection from a possible Pardon electromagnetic me? or radio wave? I'm sorry, your question is? Does that include protection from a possible electromagnetic or radio wave weapon of sorts? When we don't know what or who is responsible for it, it is difficult to do anything uh, to take action to prevent from prevent uh, an attack from something you don't know where it is coming from. So that's virtually impossible to do, and I hope people would understand that. May I follow on, may I follow on that? When you, when you don't know yet who or what, what may have happened, would that rule out 
reinstating uh, Cuba on the terror list? I, I'm and, not is that, and is that under consideration? I, I have not asked our people that lately. Uh, this is not a topic we have. Is that under consideration? I, I'm not aware of that. I can look into that and see if I can get something for you on that. However, it is something that I may not be able to answer because uh, some of these might be diplomatic comments. Okay. Oh, uh, uh, say, oh, Egyptian well, election. Nice. Good comment on the Egyptian election. Okay. Uh, let's see. The Egy today was the last day of the Egyptian election. Yesterday. Yesterday. I, no, yeah. today it was. Three days, yeah, right? I think it was three was the days. Uh, the election won't be certified until next week, so we will um, be sure to have a more fulsome statement for you on that Could next you week. clarify the situation in Sinjar? The PKK says yeah. it's left. Turkey is still making threats. What's the situation there as far as you know? Right. Um, We've certainly seen reports um, that there are those groups in Sinjar, and many of us will remember Sinjar from um, the Yazidis, uh, the Yazidis who were there who then had to be had to be rescued, some of them, and some of them were brutally murdered uh, by ISIS. Uh, we've seen the reports of those groups in Sinjar. Uh, we understand that Turkey has expressed uh, some of its concern over the presence of them in northern Iraq. Uh, Sinjar and the United States expect that any operations in Iraq would be done with the approval of uh, the Iraqi government. So if Turkey is coming into Sinjar, they need to coordinate that with the go government. Do you know if the PKK I, I, I've got to leave, leave it there. I've, I've got to leave it there. Thanks, guys.